اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم آئی سیک ریفیوج وتھ اللہ المائٹی فرام سیٹن دا ریجیکٹیڈ ون بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بائی دا نیم آف اللہ دا بینیفیشن دا مرسیفل الحمد للہ رب العالمین و سلاط و سلام اعلیٰ محمد و اعلیٰ علیہ وسلم Today, we will ponder upon 7 and 8th Ruku of chapter 4, Surah An-Nisa. However, first, let's recall what we studied in the previous session. Number 1. Allah Almighty intends that His ordainments should be adhered properly. Whereas those who are following their desires, they want the believers to be diverted from the right course. Number two, consuming one and an other's belonging in an illegal way is analogous of killing oneself by him. If someone devolves other's possession with injustice and transgression, especially in the matter of inheritance and disregards the integrity of relationships, then he will be associated with fire in accordance with divine laws. Number three, If the believers refrain from the major sins which Allah Almighty and His Prophet ﷺ have prescribed to be restrained, then their discrepancies will be nullified and they would be entered in a prestige place. The next one is, the home affairs are the responsibility of both husband and wife. If wife takes care of of the house and raises the children, then the duty of the husband is to provide the sustenance for the family. If there exists any rift between husband and wife, then it is the duty of the elders of both sides to resolve the conflict so that a family is saved from ruining. And the last one is, the purpose of the life is not marriage. Children and seeking of provisions but the real purpose is to recognize the real creator and to serve him therefore it is necessary not to ascribe any partner with him and spend from the possessions which Allah Almighty has given for the welfare of his creatures in accordance with ordainments of Allah Almighty and the Holy Prophet with this prayer That may Allah Almighty help us in understanding the true insight of the Holy Quran by the grace of His beloved Prophet Rahmat Talil Alameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us start the session Surah An-Nisa Ruku 7 and 8 comprising verses 43 to 59. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya Ayyuhal Lazina Amanu تقرب السلاطا و ان تم سکرا حتا تالم ما تقولون او بلیورز ڈو ناٹ اپروچ سلا وائل یو آر انٹاکسیکیٹڈ انٹل یو نو وٹ یو آر سئنگ ولا جنوبن الا آبری سبیل حتا تختا سلو اینڈ نار وین پولیوٹیڈ ایکسپٹ وین جرننگ انٹل You take a bath. The first underlined word is Takrabu. Go near. Drop close. Sukara. Intoxicated. This condition usually appears by the usage of liquor, narcotics, drowsiness, or the impoundment of cognition due to some arousal feeling due to which the person fails to comprehend his own saying. This word is also used for such condition when the man is agitated due to some fear or anxiety. Example, the condition in which death is about to come. There are two states in which one is not allowed to draw close to Salah. Number first, being in state of intoxication. There is a possibility that you might utter those words which you don't have any knowledge. And number two, in case of an impurity requiring proper bathing. The verse continues. 
وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مَرْدَ أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ أَوْ جَاءَ أَحَادٌ مِنْكُمْ مِنَ الْغَائِتِ أَوْ لَمَسْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ And if you are ill or on a journey or one of you comes from closet or you have contacted women and you find no water. فَلَمْ تَاجِدُوا مَا أَنْ فَتَا يَمَّمُوا سَيِّدًا تَيِّبًا فَمْسَهُ بِوَجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِكُمْ Then seek clean earth and wipe over your faces and your hands. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ أَفُوًا غَفُورًا Indeed, Allah Almighty is ever pardoning, forgiving. The first underlined word is الغائتی Toilet لَمَسْتُمُ You have touched. فَتَيَمَّمُ Then do. سَيِّدًا Earth Soil فَمْسَهُ So wipe بِوَجُوهِكُمْ Your faces. In this verse, there is also a prescription of تَيَمُّمْ along with its description. According to this verse, in chapter 6, Surah Al-Maida, verse 6, it is mentioned that in case of any illness, traveling, after coming from the place of reliving and after cohibition with females, if there is no availability of water, then tayammum can be performed to establish salah. Its procedure is that first touch pure dust and wipe your face. Secondly, touch the pure dust and wipe your hands. Alam tara ila lazina utu nasibam minal kitab. Have you not seen whom a portion of book is given? Yes, the runa talalata, wa yuri duna an tadillu sabil. They purchase divergence and intend to make you divergent from the way. Most of the researchers have considered these people as Jews who were given Torah. Wallahu alamu bi adaikum. And Allah knows those hostile to you. Wakafa billahi walayya. And Allah is sufficient as a friend. Wakafa billahi nasira. And Allah is sufficient as helper. Bi adaikum. Those causing dissension with you. Adu means any object which acts as a crossbar and restrains two things to join together. Minal ladina hadu yuhadifunal kalima ammawadi ihi. Of the Jews, there are those who displace its wordings from the topic. Vayakuluna samena wa asaina wasma gaira musma un. وَرَائِنَا لَيَّمْ بِأَلْسِنَاتِهِمْ وَتَانًا فِي الدِّينِ And they say, we hear and disobey. And hear, be not heard. And listen to us by twisting their tongues and defaming deen. The first underlined word is, يُحَرِّفُونَ They distort. أَسَيْنَا We disobey. أَسْمَا Listen, hear, musma'in, made to hear, ra'ina, excuse us, we beg your pardon. Layam, twisting, bi al sinatihim, by their tongues. Tanan, slandering. The attributes and characteristics of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are listed in Torah. The Jewish scholars used to change the context and conceal the message. They usually used dubious words by twisting their tongues. For the approbation of the noble prophet ﷺ, due to which the audaciousness and the captiousness regarding deen became evident. Verse continues. Walau annahum. قَالُوا سَمَيْنَا وَأَتَانَا وَاسْمَا وَنْزُرْنَا لَقَانَا خَيْرَ اللَّهُمْ وَأَقْوَامْ 
and if they had said we hear and we obey we hear you and look at us it had been better for them and more upright walakil la anahumullahu bi kufrihim fala yu'minuna illa qalila and allah almighty had cursed them for their negation so they believe not except a few aqwama more appropriate apparently they listened to the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but their actions showed arrogance if they had restrained from such things it would have been better for them due to their haughtiness and improper attitude the curse from allah almighty has been imposed on them and that is this affection from his mercy ya ayyuhal ladina utul kitaba aminu bima nazzalna musaddiqan lima ma'akum o you whom the scripture has been given believe in what we have revealed confirming that what you have min qabli an natmisa wujuhan fana ruddaha ala adbariha aw nal anahum kama la anna ashab as-sabt before we obliterate the faces so turn them toward their back or curse them as we curse the people of sabat wa kana amrullahi maf'ula and allah's ordainment is always executed natmisa we efface fana ruddaha so turn them adbariha their backs asabti sabat break the first part of the word is a forewarning about a threat that if you do not believe on the holy quran then be ready for severe consequences and the next part is the illustration of the people of sabat which is the example of the implementation of that threat according to the divine laws whoever does this will have the same chastisement like those of the transgressors of sabat when we look around we can see the manifestations of this punishment with our own eyes the details about people of sabat are mentioned in chapter 7 surah al-araf verse 163 to 166 according to which there was a town of bani israil near the sea their earnings was fishery a restriction was imposed on them on the day of saturday about fishing but they remained persistent in their acts and used other means to catch the fishes they were warned several times but they did not mend their ways as a result they were transformed to apes as a chastisement inna allaha la yaghfiru an yushraka bi indeed Allah Almighty does not relent for ascribing partners with him wa yaghfiru ma duna zalika limay yasha'u and relents from anything other than it to whom who desires wa may yushrik billahi faqad tiftara isman azima and whoever ascribes partner with Allah Almighty verily he has contrived a great sin after a he has fabricated the literal meaning of shirk polytheism is to abate or curtail the truth the holy quran has mentioned polytheism as a cardinal sin and it has been illustrated that all other sins can be forgiven except polytheism alam tara ila alladhina yuzakkuna anfusahum have you not seen those who claim purity for themselves balillahu 
يزكي من يشاء ولا يسلمون فتيلا rather allah almighty purifies who wishes and no injustice is done as much as a threat fatilan here on date there is no such thing as self purification purification is attained by obedience and adherence to the ordinances of allah almighty and his noble messenger sallallahu alaihi wa sallam انظر كيف يفترون على الله القذب لوك هاو دي فابريكيت لايز اباوت الله المايتي وكفى به اسم مبينا سفيشنت از ذات از ا مانيفست سين الم ترى الى الذين اوتوا نصيبا من الكتاب يؤمنون بالجبت والتاغوت هاف يو نوت سين who were given a portion of the book they believe in superstition and false objects of worship wa yaquluna lil ladina kafaru ha ulai ahda min al ladina amanu sabila and they say about this believers they are better guided than believers as to the way biljepti in the misconception there's no reality of the fictitious proclamations of the folks of books and they are arguing that the polytheists are guided compared to the adherents of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is an absolute wrong and a great defiance ulaika allazina la anahumullah these are the ones whom allah almighty has cursed wa may yal anillahu falan tajida lahu nasira and whom allah almighty curses then you will not find for him any helper due to the perception of the people of book mentioned in the previous verse allah almighty has cursed them that is an alienation from his mercy and whoever is being given the chastisement will never get any help am lahum naseebum min al mulki or have they a share in the sovereignty fa izal la yutuna nasa nakira then they would not give the people even the speck on a date nakiran very little am yasuduna nasa ala ma atahum allah min fazli or are they jealous of people for what allah almighty has given them of his bounty faqat ataina ala ibrahim al kitaba wal hikmata wa ataina hum mulkan azima verily we gave the descendants of ibrahim al islam the book and wisdom and conferred upon them great bounty ya suduna dar envious if such people have some authority then they would not give a single thing to the followers of truth the fact is that they are in envy that this blessing of guidance was not given to them fa minhum man amana bihi wa minhum man sadda anhu so of them are some who believed in it and of them are who were averse of it wa kafa bi jahannam sayira and sufficient is hell as a place their condition is that some among them have faith while others reject it and they are continuously negating the signs of the truth they will be entered in the conflagrations of hell inna allazina kafaru bi ayatina sawfa nuslihim nara indeed those who reject our signs we will attach them with fire kullama nudijat juluduhum badalnahum juludan ghairaha liyazukul azab as often as their skins have outlasted 
we will replace them with other skin so that they taste the chastisement in allah kana azizan hakima indeed allah almighty is the honorable all wise nadijat had outlived jaluduhum their skins all those who disbelieve in the signs of allah almighty would be attached to fire and whenever their skins outlived then it will be replaced with the new ones so that the process of agony continues when some expert doctors contemplated on this point they found that the vital part of the pain is felt by the skin therefore if the skin is made senseless before the operation of the person then he will not feel any discomfort this discovery led to the procedure of anesthesia this reality was mentioned in the holy quran before 14 centuries but due to lack of research and contemplations in muslims this discovery became the credit of non muslims wal ladina amanu wa amilu salihati and those who believe and do righteous deeds so not khil hum jannatin tajri min tatihal anharu khalidina fiha abada we will enter them to the gardens beneath which streams flow wherein they abide for the life long lahum fiha azwajum mutahharatun for them there in are sanctified companions wa not khil hum zillan zalila and we will enter them to deepening shades abadan lasting zillan shade zalilan thick shades this verse is about those believers who believe in allah almighty and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and perform the righteous deeds with devotion and pure intention allah almighty will bless these people with benedictions and approvals and they will remain there in peace and harmony and enjoy with the approbations of the paradise inna allaha yamurukum an tuaddul amanati ila ahliha wa iza hakamtum baina nasi an tahkumu bil adl indeed allah almighty commands you render trust to whom they are due and when you judge between people judge with justice inna allah ni'ma yazukum bi inna allah kana samiyam basira indeed best is the advice which allah almighty gives you indeed allah almighty is ever hearing visionary ni'ma excellently in social laws where allah almighty has emphasized about bequest and respect of the relations he has also ordained for justice and entrustment so that a society with the best norms can be established where the rights of everyone are protected and everyone has the equal opportunity to prosper ya ayyuhal ladina amanu ati allah wa ati rasul wa ulil amri minkum o believers obey allah almighty and obey the messenger and those in authority among you fa in tanazatum fi shay'in fa rudduhu ila allah wa rasuli in kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawmil akhir thus if you have a dispute about anything so refer it to allah almighty and the messenger if you are believers in allah almighty and here after zalika khairun wa asanu tawila this is better and best interpretation ulil amri those having authority of matters tawila elucidation for the establishment of an exemplary society it is mandatory that its basis should be subjected 
with the obedience to Allah Almighty and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the people of authority. And for the believers, it is an obligation that if some dispute arises among them, then they shall refer it to Allah Almighty and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is, turn it towards the Allah's book and Sharia of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A summary of both rukus. Number first, the believers are not allowed to establish salah if intoxicated until that state is over and in case of impurity unless one has taken a bath. In case of any illness, journeying after excretion or having intercourse with wife, if water is unavailable, then one can do tayammum and perform salah. Number two, those who adulterate Allah's message and show defiance to his noble messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are cursed. One of the example of curse is incident of the people of Sabah who were transformed into apes due to their transgressions. Number three, self-fabricated beliefs, perceptions and customs are absolute illusions. Their followings leads to a disaster and a distancing from the mercy of the Lord. The second last is, there are two groups among people of book. Some of them accept the reality while others alienate themselves from the truth and strive against the divine message and strive to mislead the believers. They would have a sphere chastisement. And the last one is, whereas those who believe in the true message and perform righteous deeds, they will have the cherishment of paradise, where they will live in peace, harmony, and stay in the shadow of the mercy of Allah Almighty. May Allah Almighty help us in understanding the true insight of the Holy Quran, and may we act upon it under the guidance of the lifespan of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sadaqallahu Aliyul Azim. Allah spoke truth, the exalted, the great. Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Habibihi Muhammadin Wa Alihi Wasallam.